Okay, this is uh, Mike with Edge on Up, and I'm back with uh, part three of our CNC 10 tutorial. Uh, if you remember in part two of this tutorial, we left the knife and our eLab A uh, just in this state. So I have taken the opportunity then during the break to uh, hook up our, our RS-232 slash USB cable up to my laptop and I have loaded Edge Lab Pro user interface software so that means that we'll be generating a graph of this uh, slicing cut that we're about to do um, so I've set the uh, test up to run manually and so I need to go over here and start the test and then we can begin to slice with the CNC 10. At the uh, close of this video I'll um, carry the laptop back to my desk and um, and we'll do some and we'll be back with some analysis of the test. Um, and if you'll remember, we're using our same old $8 kitchen knife for this, uh, for this test. Okay, so here we go. I will kick the test off here. And once again, we're not logging any data yet because the uh, eLab A hasn't sen sensed that there's been any force applied to the force plate, so we're not currently logging data but we will be soon enough. So I want to want you to take pay particular attention to how I uh, manipulate the uh, CNC 10. What I'm going to do is without touch touching anything is I'm going to put one finger over here my index finger I'm going to put my index finger over here I'm going to put my thumbs on the end of the bar of the slide slide bars and then I'm just going to kind of squeeze and I'm going to try to do so slowly um, in order to lengthen the test out and um, so that's about the size of it. Now you can do it however you want to do it but that's a way that I find that works for me because I'm assured of holding the knife down um, with my finger with my index fingers on top of the uh, of the uh, uh, blocks the slide blocks here and then putting my thumbs on the ends just seems to give me better control but you can do it however you like okay so here we go I've begun the test I put my fingers up here okay now at this point we have started into the slice because I can see the numbers going up on the display here I'm going very slowly because we're going to try to collect as much data as we can And we're cutting down through the test media. We don't anticipate that we'll cut all the way through, but we'll cut most of the way through. And that's it. I'm at the end of the rails, so I'll stop the test. And we've generated a graph, and now we'll go analyze it. Okay, sorry, but uh, I thought it would be instructive to show you this. This is what the, uh, the slice in our test media looked like when we were through. So you can see we started right up here at this top notch, and we were headed right towards the bottom notch. But I also wanted to point this out. You see how the, how the test media has split apart? It hasn't torn, but where it's been previously sliced, it has a tendency to pull away. That is because of the design. That's why we wrap this test media around this radius to eliminate 
the, in other words, we want to focus on, on the slicing ability of the edge and not so much on the geometry of the blade. And so that's why we do that, although it's impossible to eliminate totally geometry. Um, and geometry does show up, but uh, I just thought you would find that of interest. Okay, now I'll take this, uh, I'll take this PC back to the office, and uh, we'll, I'll be back with an analysis of the software, of the uh, data results. Okay, this is Mike, and I'm back with the uh, with the uh, graph results. Uh, I haven't saved this data yet, and I wanted to leave it live here so that you could see um, uh, what the results were before I save it. And that allows us to do some trimming and so on and so forth if we want to, and I think we want to here, uh, because if you remember... With this same knife, we did two manual tests, and the and the results of those two tests, if memory serves, were like the average force was on one was like was 287, and the other the second test was 291 in our manual test. If you were fortunate enough to see that video. So, but keep this in mind, the entire length of that test was, or those two tests were, were right at six seconds. And if you'll notice something here, before we actually begin the, in the, the test here, where in other words, before we actually begin cutting any test media, we are sitting at something a little over three seconds. So, in other words, this is a demonstration where I'm going to demonstrate to you how this can skew data is this upward ramp here when you first begin the test. And that's why it's so useful to be able to trim that off. And I'm going to guess, of course, that our, that our average force will go up once we trim but before we do the trimming, let's, let's just look at this. You know, uh, the average was 272. The max was 332. So you can see we spent a lot of time, almost, uh, well, over 40 seconds in this test. And, uh, and you can see how we've got this. We're just hanging right in here around this, let's see... Oh, 300 mark, let's call it, 303 in that case. Uh, I'm going to guess this looks to be about the max here. 322, no, that must not be quite the max. Well, anyhow, it's in here someplace. There's 331, so that's about the max uh, at this point right here. So... Uh, so we just, we're kind of hanging around here, and this just shows you, I mean, this is an $8 grocery store knife, and it did a quite nice job, but you can see, uh, my experience there is, is, I don't care if you get it, if you buy your knives at Target, or you buy them at the grocery store, or, or wherever you may buy them. One thing they always do a bad job of is, is deburring. So, and I think that's what you see the effects of right here. A bad bur deburring job. Um, so, anyhow, and this is after uh, doing several slice tests with that particular knife in the production of these tutorials. Uh, because my experience is, is, is our slice test media does a pretty good job of taking a lot of burr off a knife. So, uh, anyhow, and then, of course, finally, we get down here towards the end of the test and we start sloping down. Now, that's going to be the effects of geometry on the blade, because the closer we get to the bottom, the more that test media splits apart and the less grip it has on the sides of the knife blade. Until finally, you'll notice down here, we never went to zero. 
because we never actually cut completely through the uh, test meat. So, what, down here we're at 179. And to be honest with you, I haven't looked into that far enough to like say what that means or if it means anything. When the, when the edge is just sitting in stasis and, uh, um, and, but it has this nice solid reading that it generates. So anyhow, let's, uh, let's get back, let's get back to trimming and see what that it does. We're, what we're looking at is, is we're not going to affect this number right here. We're going to affect this number right here. This number is the one that will show the effect of trimming. And of course, that is 271.55, and here it is rounded up to 272. Okay, so let's say adjust graph. And I think we can probably safely take everything off here. And that alone raised us to 280. And then if we go adjust graph and let's go oh, about here. Now we're at 290. So um, that's what trimming can do for you. Uh, and you'll notice that's right smack in between where our two manual tests conducted uh, with our um, uh, the same kitchen knife was in our manual tests that we did um, in our earlier tutorials. And if you haven't seen that, go back and check it out, and you'll and you'll see. So, oh, and then. Look what that does to our resolution of our graph here. Now we can really see the ups and downs. Now that's not a lot of grams because it's just blowing up so much, but uh, it surely is interesting, isn't it? Now we'll do some we'll do some tests here where we intentionally dull a spot on a knife, and we'll we'll go through the test a little faster and we'll we'll make that stick out. But that's that's to come. So let's do this. Let's uh, reset our graph. And then let's go up here just so that you know how this is done for sure. Um, whoops, I'm in the wrong place. So I'll say cancel. Uh, so we want to export this data. We could copy it to our clipboard, but we don't want to do that. I've made a uh, I've made a folder on my desktop called CNC 10 over here, and I think that's where we'll put it. So export data. We'll just call this CNC 10. Um, this was, we'll just say that was um, 30 for uh, SLC 30 test media. We won't leave any notes. We're going to export both the graph and the data. We're going to say export. We're saving it in the right place here. This is the, it saves, as you can see, saves graph images as a JPEG. Save the graph image. Okay. And now save the data in the same place and of course that will be a CSV file that you can stick into Excel if you want. Okay, that's it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And when the music comes on, that means it's time to turn the lights in our charging room off.